the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show with Billy the Kid and Scott Tank. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. What's going on? I'm Scott. I'm Bill. And this is the, the Bill and Scott, Scott Cubicle Show. Show. Epi number something. Also, shout out to all the librarians out in the office that are librarians, but they pretend not to be librarians. And when we talk about the people complaining about us, they try to chime in like, like we know it's you. Yeah. Like, That's, stop playing yourself. It's one thing if you're just going to be a librarian and you're going to be quiet and you're going to complain about it off screen. But then when we start talking about librarians and you pop your head up and pretend like you're not one, don't insult my intelligence yeah, like that. I find we that, know who you are. I find it very disrespectful. <laughs> I also find it, like, a super annoying that, like, like okay, you want to complain and then you're the first person to hop in conversations, yeah. too. Like, okay. No, knock it off. I just wanted to throw that out there. We Follow got a lot to get rules. to today. Ariana Grande is a new bay. I Netflix forgot my water is a bottle. Super deal. Alicia Keys has a fake DJ. Yo, this is a great story. <laughs> um, Niall from One Direction, he's got a new bay. There's a bunch of new bays. Yeah, um, it's the season of love right now. Kendrick Lamar. Ooh, man. Kendrick Lamar. This is a, there's some toasty takes for this yeah, one. We're going to get there's into that. There's a bunch of angles we could approach um, young Kendrick. They call him K Dot, but I don't. I don't like saying that. Yeah. We'll get into that in just a wee little bit because that's more Heineken light. So we'll get through the ketchup <laughs> slice and we'll get to the Heineken light. Uh, it's not full get Heineken. Get to the sauce by the and then, end. Um, and then we'll get to the uh, bad joke section of the uh, of the edition. Let's get it rolling here. Ariana Grande. She's got an alleged new bay. She is casually seeing Pete Davidson from Saturday oh, Night Live. Okay. So is this a revelation to you? You didn't know who it was beforehand? I just surprised you with that information. Did no. I just give you the scoop? The ice cream scoop? Are you a Scott Sunday with some hot fudge and sprinkles on top? No. Um, really padding out the segment because that, there's not much to say about I, uh, it. I will say that I knew when I went in and I talked to you in the studio this morning, like a uh, like, little bit oh, before yeah, 9. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew then. Right. But after that... Every time I've uh, read about it or been told about it, I've kind of already knew. Well, here's the thing. Let's take a look at the um, the history of celebrity romance through the prism of Saturday Night Live. Mm, tell me. Since October. So we've got Emma Stone is dating a writer from SNL. Ben Affleck is dating a producer. Colin Jost, which you corrected me on last time when I, when I said Jost on the air, he just confirmed... His relationship with Scarlett Johansson on the show during Weekend Update, he referred to his girlfriend, um, and she was actually on that episode. She was doing an impression of somebody. So, I mean, you know, SNL with all its celebrity cameos and whatnot, but it's just like, you know what? I feel like maybe I'm due for a career move here mm. to SNL, that because all the ridiculously attractive people that get paraded through there apparently find SNL employees irresistible. There's, uh, I'm not going to lie, I've uh, tried and tried and tried and tried again to get on Saturday Night Live. Really? Have you, like, applied and stuff? Yeah, not, like, as, like, a, as a, as a performer, yeah. but to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. like, In some capacity. Yeah, I've, I've applied, like, probably 20 times. Dang, that's impressive, because I never would have even thought to actually do like, that. Like, every, like, every, like, year I go and I apply, like, before, like... Like, before the new seasons come, like, a month before the new season comes, I'll go and I'll look and I'll, like, apply for, like, a couple jobs. And, you know, maybe one day I'll get it. Maybe one day I'll get offered it and I will turn it down. Who who knows? But I do. I love, I've always loved Saturday Night Live, like, ever since a kid. A wee little kid, I used to always watch it. I've gone through spurts, and I feel like it's gone through spurts where it's gotten kind of bad. I don't think most people would disagree with that, but... I think it's had its times. It's had its ups and downs. Yeah, like I, I think conceptually, but I, I love Saturday Night Live. But I don't think Saturday Night Live has ever been as bad as people said it's been at points in times. Like, yeah, it's had its lows, but I don't think the lows were even that bad. As somebody that's always watched it, but we're going off on something else mm. there. Um... Also, somebody, uh, and oh. so he, she recently broke up with yeah, Mac right. Miller, right? Yeah, right, forgot about all this. Now, Mac Miller also just got in a accident, a major car accident. He got a DUI where he, uh, he had twice the legal limit in his system. His blood alcohol uh, content was one or .15, which is, you know, more than double .08. Uh, he got in a crazy accident. Now, he did date Ariana for almost... Two, two years. years. 
Two. Now, is Ariana Grande to blame for this accident? I say yes. And I say if somebody gets arrested or goes to jail, it should be Ariana Grande. If you're in a relationship that's over 18 months and that relationship ends, whoever ends the relationship is responsible for the next person for three months. If that person Wait. robs a bank, you get in trouble for it. If that person gets a DUI, you get in trouble for it. So every six months of the relationship constitutes one month of your responsibility for their behavior afterwards? Exactly. I mean, we can clearly tell who's handling this breakup more effectively. I hesitate to say winning the breakup because casually dating from somebody from Saturday Night Live, I mean, sure, that's a lot better than getting a DUI and a hit and run. Yeah. But just, just look at how it's affecting poor Mac. Ariana's on top of the world. Right. She freaking, she releases her first single off her upcoming album, which is a breakup song. Then days later, days later, days later confirms the breakup with Mac Miller. Then a couple weeks later, oh, all of a sudden, she's with a new prospect. What must it be like to be somebody who has suitors at their disposal at any given time, and never, you know, it never has to fear for a re, or never has to want for a rebound. Mm. I don't think this is gonna last. I'm just gonna say that because I don't think this guy makes enough money to support her lifestyle. Well, she used to. Pete Davidson used to date what's her name? Uh, whose daughter? Oh my God, she's super famous, or her, her father's super freaking famous. I'll get back to it later in the episode. It'll come to me. Uh, but let's uh, move on to yeah. the new bay, Niall from One Direction. Who's who's his new bay? His new bay is Haley Steinfeld. So there's, I don't know if you could say there's more star power in total in this relationship. It might be about even. Um, they've been uh, the subject of dating rumors since about January when they were spotted at a showing of Hamilton together. Um, they were just spotted this past uh, Friday night making out mm. a whole bunch over the course of the night. And I don't know what says we're dating better than making out. The entire night, other than maybe following each other on Instagram, which they don't do. I feel oh. like I feel like the Instagram follow these days is basically the celebrity version of making it Facebook official. Because you'll notice that Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez never followed each other on Instagram back when they were dating again a couple months ago. Ooh. And now we've got Niall and Haley Steinfeld, and they're dating, and it's obvious that they've been together for a couple of months, but it's not official. They haven't made an announcement. They haven't confirmed and come out as a couple, so they're not following each other. I think when they emerge as a couple, then they'll follow each other, which is weird. I just like the juxtaposition of normal people, you know, like where we see somebody and we're like, oh, I think you're kind of attractive. I'm going to follow you, and then maybe slide in those DMs. The celebrities have it all backwards. Mm, they they don't follow on Instagram. They make lots of money. They seem to lead happy, fulfilled lives. And they want to be treated like regular people. Yeah, regular, <laughs> schmegular. Oh, oh, man. Please. Uh, so, Pete Davidson's ex-girlfriend, Larry David's daughter. Okay. Uh, Cassie? Okay. Was Is that her name? I don't know. Cassie I don't, David? I couldn't tell you. Anyways, yeah, so he uh, he's actually kind of been dipping into the pot of riches quite a bit. Oh, he, is he a celebrity? Is he the gold digger? Ooh, he's a male Gold he's, a, he's a prospector. That's wow. what we call male gold diggers, I think. Um, also, uh, Pete, yeah. the old prospector. He's Stinky Pete. He's Stinky Pete from Toy Story 2. Hit him with the... Oh, man. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you were voiced by Kelsey Grammer, my friend. So, Genevieve, uh, one of the reasons why we don't want to confront them is because it's fun to keep it all going. And once it's all out there, we can no longer... Be super passive aggressive True. like we are. Keep so that's one pals. of the main reasons why. Um, plus, it's going to lead into something else, and it's already been something. Uh, moving along, the Obamas just signed a major. Oh wow, uh -oh. you all right, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys just missed like something that was like awesome. Dang, but, the camera uh, was facing the complete wrong hit direction. The, hit the door there. Listen, sorry I'm late. How do you want to come? <laughs> <laughs> Sean McMaster, everybody. <laughs> he's just he's gonna. I thought he was gonna walk in while the mic light was on. Yeah, and just, good. yes, nice, perfect. Good. Okay. Shh. Yo, yeah. that is what you call a freaking rebel. That's that is a G. man that knows no rules. Those are bars. that light on means do not come in. And Sean was like, you know what? Screw your rules. That's the librarian light. He was like. We're having none of it. None of it. Just straight g them up. Oh, man. Bars. That was hard. Yeah. Res oh, <laughs> oh, man. You guys are missing it all. Retupect over there. Sean McMaster, everybody.
Uh, so the Obamas just signed a major deal with uh, Netflix. Basically, they just signed away the rights of their life to Netflix. It doesn't matter documentaries, uh, originals, sitcoms, whatever developed about the Obamas or about their life. It's basically going to be on Netflix. Netflix is going to own basically the entertainment distribution rights to the Obama family. Pretty much it sounded like. Interesting. So it was that April Fool's prank about Netflix owning Seth Rogen a precursor? Was that foreshadowing mm. to this Obama development? Wow. What I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> Netflix has billions of dollars that they're just spending on any type of stuff. And even if there's only a million people that watch like the specials they put out, that's still like more than the average television show on television gets. Not to mention they got to bolster their roster for when Disney takes away all their content. Yeah. And, you know, love them or hate them, the Obamas are pretty popular. True. That is true. You know, that was one of the main reasons, like, what people liked about, like, Brock was the fact that he was, like, smooth, smooth man. All right. Um, Speaking now, of being popular, through, do, okay. we go, do we go there or do we well, go here? Be, let's touch on the fake DJ right, right. before we get into this Kendrick Lamar. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, there's this guy in uh, Pennsylvania that's been going around over the past week or so, and he's been pretending to be Alicia Keys' DJ. He's gone to schools, like high schools, and talked to the students about the music industry and all this stuff. Well, anyways, after he was there, the kids decided to go and look him up, and I guess he's got a rap sheet, all this stuff. He comes up in the jail. So he's not really a DJ. No. He is not really a DJ. So now the police are looking for this fake DJ who claims to be Alicia Keys's DJ. This is the man that well, was on the uh, well, on the article. Graphic, I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Good old Coleman. Right there, there he is. Coleman guy. Okay. He is the one that. Uh, ah, there it's. That fixed it. <laughs> he is the fake Alicia Keys's DJ. Now, do you want to know who the real? Alicia Keys DJ is. The reason why this is so amusing. To us, at least. <laughs> is that this guy right here, DJ Irock, who does the 5 o'clock mixtape, and he's also does the night show on Jam 76.3. He's legitimately <laughs> Alicia Keys' DJ. We know the real Alicia Keys yeah. DJ, and this guy's <laughs> pretending to be him. That is hilarious to Wait, me. He travels the world with Alicia Keys. Woo. Multiple times. The only other person that you'll ever see on stage with Alicia Keys, if it's not iRock, is Guru. And Guru is Jay Z's like main like producer. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, if it's not iRock, it's this guy, Guru. You go back and you watch Alicia Keys Grammys performances, you see iRock. Dude. You go in, watch Alicia Keys' like videos, like that one girl don't know my name or whatever it is, you don't know my name song. I rocks DJing and he gives an ill point in the video. <laughs> like, you, know what I mean? you know, he actually has his own Wikipedia page, which I knew, but I had forgotten about, and then I was reading it. So you can go to Wikipedia and look up DJ I rock and it shouts out jams. One of the only places that does shout out jams. Yeah. They don't marginalize us. Wow, on Wikipedia, Wikipedia doesn't marginalize people. Wow, real people. Props to Wikipedia. They get the the chest all pound, day. The chest pound. So that's pretty amusing right there. That's, <laughs> that's our life. I can't wait till this afternoon during the 5 o'clock mixtape to bring this up to Iraq and see what he has to say about it. Now, Kendrick Lamar was performing last night, the other night at a show, and he had a fan come up on stage and uh, rap along to one of his songs. Mad City. During the song, there's a few N-bombs. And this woman decided to just rap along to the lyrics of the song, dropping whatever n bomb or just straight uncensored, uncensored, just going for it. Well, Kung Fu Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the first time I've ever heard him referred to as Kung Fu Kenny. Oh, he calls himself Kung does Fu. Does he Kenny. really? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Wow. He's Kung Fu look Kenny, at me, making me look like an uncultured swine. Yeah. There's another Toy Story reference on his um on his album he's like Kung Fu Kenny okay. and all that stuff and then like last year during Coachella and stuff he had like all this Kung Fu Kenny stuff going on anyways he's like oh whoa 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 stop and then he basically tells he's like yo are you serious to this girl and she's like what bro am I not, not cool, cool enough, enough for you bro, bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well anyways uh and he's like, yo, all you had to do was censor one word, one word. And she's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then they go she's on. Like, and she they apologizes do it again. as though she has no idea. She's like, oh, no, I, I had no idea. I'm so sorry. Wait, please, please let me stay on the stage. So he's like, all right. You know, they keep, they kick it back on. And she, and then she goes and she censors herself. But it's like, she's totally thrown off by the fact that she can't say that particular word and just like screws it up. And then Kendrick's like, all right, it's over. Yeah. 
ushers are out. Now, there's a few different perspectives on this because I try to look at things from multiple angles, not just the angle that I I see things at. One is I'll say the most unfavorable one first, right? Okay. Kendrick set her up. Okay. Some people may be like that. Well, what's the big deal? It's a song. Why can't I say that? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, I'll say with that, I think there's a difference of singing along in the audience and then singing along on stage with the person. I think that's a big difference. You know, some people may not care if you use that word. Some people care if you use that word. If you don't know your climate, first, my personal opinion is I don't think that word should be used at all. But... Depending on the climate, will to tell you if you can use the word or not. So I think that she played herself. I think it was a setup, but I don't think it was a setup. Myself, whenever I'm rapping along to a song <laughs> and that word comes up, I always just replace it with youngin'. That's been like a thing that I've replaced it with like for like 20 years now is youngin'. That's smart. It it makes works. sure you never get caught or always. never trip up, I mean. And it like fits with it and everything because if you want to... What am I, youngin? Like, you know, it's like, it just, it works. I like to replace it with Norwegian because it's like the Norwegian. exact opposite with the, you know, the the light skin, light hair, and it's something, you know, it's too many syllables, it's clunky. I, I do goofy. like, I do like when uh, Childish Gambino censored the word on his, like, uh, Jimmy Fallon performance and he changed it to Neighbors. Oh, yeah, Neighbor. It reminds me of, now nah, I'm going to get off on a tangent here, never mind. Actually, I'm going to get off on the tangent because you're reading comments. It reminds me of Tenacious D and The Pick of Destiny and how they had the soundtrack to that movie and it was super vulgar. But then they released an edited soundtrack, but instead of just bleeping things out, they replaced it all with nonsense words. And it was actually funnier mm. than the original soundtrack. Yeah. And uh, so Genevieve says people should just write cleaner and more wholesome rap so this doesn't happen. You know, but then you're like telling people how to make their art. And I don't think that's fair at all. Like... Just, like somebody's reality is different than your reality or my reality. Like you know, perspectives are all different. So can't tell somebody to change their perspective on how they see things because we see things differently. I personally think if a word is offensive, it should be offensive and nobody should say it. I agree. That said, um, I do. I fall in the well, sort of, because I had a I had a kind of a ray of light from heaven moment, like a little come to Jesus moment at the end when I was talking about this earlier on the Daily Dish. I think you set her up. Because, um, like, a lot of people are like, yeah, Kendrick, way to shut this girl down. She shouldn't have been doing that. Now, obviously, it, well, I should I say obviously, it seems pretty apparent that she was drunk or high or both on something. She's, I don't think she's, like, totally with it on the stage, just from the way it's like, I, I, am I not cool enough for you, bro? It's, like, so slow and stilted. But, like, I understand, I don't care. I'm not going to get into a discussion of who can say what words based on what you look like. But, like, if you know that you've written this song with a word that you don't want somebody to say, for any reason whatsoever, I don't care if you're the artist and it's your song and your show, you can say, hey, don't say this. But then don't bring them up on stage with you. Like, if you don't want a white girl to say that word, why are you bringing her up on stage with a song that you know has that word that she might use? Now, the uh, the flip side, of, oh, you, you go ahead because you got a point. I was going to say, and also <laughs> I feel like, you know, unfortunately if you do something like that, like, she could not have, like, you know... Listen, like, a lot of people feel certain ways about certain things. Like, I, I, I don't think that word should be used. I think it's, you know, I think the origins of the word is, like, very hateful, and it, it's a very hurtful thing. But, like you said, if somebody's going up there and you bring them up there to bring it, but well, you could take somebody that's, like, and she innocently did it. She didn't. She doesn't realize. Maybe she's not a racist. What if a moment like this turns her to be a racist? You know what I mean? Like, what if she looks at it like, damn, I was set up in front of all these people made to look like a fool. What if this turns her to a racist? I don't think it's a win-win for anybody. I think it's a major fail for Kendrick and this woman that got up there. Yeah, right? that's yeah, because I think there's, there will be some... I'm not hearing much of it now, but I think there probably will be some backlash as this news starts to circulate in the wider media. Um, although, here's the other thing, is the flip side of this this setup situation, is let's, let's take a look at... She got up on stage and said that word three times, three times before he stopped her. Three strikes, it, you're out. Uh, it occurred to me, though, that maybe he doesn't care, but if you listen, the crowd is, like, shouting and booing, and maybe he was like, mmm, this is a bad look for me to let this white girl up on this stage say this word. I gotta shut this down, because, like you said, know the climate, know your audience, and he's gotta put a stop to this as a representative of the community, so to speak. You know, in that case, because I was like, man, Kendrick lost some cloud tokens for setting this girl up like this. 
not setting her up on purpose, obviously, but like for going into a situation where you know this could happen and going through with it. Um, it was not thought out. It wasn't thought out. At the very least, it wasn't thought like, out. Like, it's a cool moment to go up on stage, share the moment with one of your favorite artists, sing their song, yeah, rap their song. Sure. That's cool. But, yeah, not, not thought out. But if, if, it, if it was that way, where, you know, he, she got up there, started doing that, and the crowd reacted poorly, and he was like, oh, got to do some damage control. And that's like, okay, I have a little bit more respect for that, because you do, you do have to play to your audience. You can't say certain things or do certain things. <laughs> you don't want to alienate your fan base. So, that's sort of... That's kind of what I hope we'll happens. Leave it at that. Yeah. You, know, you can let us know how you feel about it below if you haven't yet. But, you know, I do think it's tough. I mean, it, it's, Twitter a, fingers. It, it's a it's a situation. Yeah, oh, it's definitely, you got to be super careful discussing it, too. Yeah. Because everybody gets so freaking pissed off and offended about everything. And I'm not afraid to call out all the people that get freaking pissed off and offended about everything. Because if pisses me off. I get offended and people get offended. That's like, actually, that's one of the really the only things that offends me. It doesn't even, I, I don't, offended? Can I call it being offended? No, irritated. Because, man, people just need to learn how to take a joke. Generally speaking. Yeah, especially when they're like dumb jokes. Yeah. Or bad jokes. Oh, you did it. You did. All right, let's get into you this here. here. Oh, ho, ho, the segue. Hey there. Okay, first bad joke up. All right, I haven't seen. This is my first experience oh, with all these bad jokes. <clears throat> Ariana Grande. Oh, wow, look at this. You did know. Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson from Saturday Night Live are casually seeing each other, which means Pete's now dating someone who looks the age he acts. Because Ariana Grande <laughs> looks 12, is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, he acts like a child. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, barred him up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bad joke number two. Bad joke number two. According to a new study, taking your shoes off at your front door could help you lose weight. You know what else it will help you with? That's keeping your floors clean. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Factory. And you know what? If you lose weight, that keeps your floors even cleaner because it's less pressure with the dirt on your floor. Damn, Boom. son. Science. Yo, that's God's God plan. God and lastly, plan. the last bad joke of the day. I apologize about the bad, bad jokes. Or jokes? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Apologize about the bad, bad jokes over the past few weeks. I've been like Taylor Swift and blank spacing it a lot lately. Yeah! Yo! That's my favorite radio single mm. of the last nine years. And I never hesitate to say that anytime I talk into it. And I will give the assist to Bill on that because I was like, and when I went down and earlier when I was like, oh, I found out about when I was talking to you in the studio around nine o'clock, I was like, I was like, I got to go try to write some bad jokes because honestly, I've been blank spacing a lot like Taylor Swift. Just See, can't you, come up with them. You came up with it. I just said, I just kind of push you in the right direction like a little like a baby that's crawling and needs to be squished Well, sometimes up my walk. problem is is that I say things and I don't realize fully you don't understand your own potential. Like, yeah. You could this is Saturday night live material, people. This is SNL right here. This is I'm going to date Ariana Grande type stuff. No. Or maybe Emma Stone because well, the would writer like dates Emma Stone. I would take either Emma or. Stone. I would take you. Well, I would like Emma Stone more, but personally, on a personal level, I would much rather be associated with Emma Stone. She seems like a pleasant person. Ariana Grande does not. Now, granted, we're not supposed to say bad things about artists, but I don't care. And with that being said, you can catch us on the Jams Facebook page Monday through Thursday at 10:30 Eastern Time. Because that's the only time zone that matters. One. Cubicle show, cubicle show, cubicle show, cubicle show! That's what I'm talking about, boy! Bill and Scott Cubicle Show, yeah? Bill and Scott Cubicle Show, yeah! Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show, cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's, it's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. Cubicle show. <laughs> 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 we just got one. Boy. <laughs>